So we had no relationship at all with Cordell. We purchased them in 2015 in April and subsequently took three to four months to do a name change for CRA and PSBC to absorb those corporate requirements. And Cordell had been a government contractor in the past? I believe so, yes. We've, we've never worked with Cordell ever, especially not prior to April 2015. Is there uh, involvement by you or GC Strategies prior uh, to 2015? Have you been doing how much? How long have you been doing work for the government? I guess what I'm trying to get. How long have you been contracted? Okay. You besides GC but Strategies. Since 2007 was when I first started being uh, in the IT section, services to the government. And how much do you recall how much you've received overall with, with the government of Canada, including those years? How many contracts, sorry? How much, sorry, yeah, how, much you've, how many contracts, how much money you've made over that period of time? Pretty close to 100 contracts in totality from 2007 to 2023. And that process was a similar way you're doing it now? You've, you've arranged a contract and then you subcontract to service providers and skill sets? Is that how it works? Yeah. Yeah, I've been I've been working in the IT staffing industry since 2007, like the other 636 other firms that are out there. So that's normal practice uh, in industry and in other governments as well. Do you know? Yeah, I can't speak to other industries, but in the federal government where I've been working since 2007, I can say that's normal practice. And um, in in your del deliberations in coming here today, I mean, it's seen as been very tough on your family and yourself. Um, do you, what is, what is it that people are perceived that you're trying to hide something? What is it that is concerning you here? So it, it's actually just how this whole thing is being conducted. It's nothing about information and how it's being shared or even asking the questions. I mean, anybody in our industry or anybody in the 5,000 IT staffing firms employing $81,000 contributing $10 billion to the economy knows exactly what our staff and what our business model is. It's people that are misinformed and misled are the ones who are up, up in arms understanding this. This is There's a cost of doing business, and 636 other firms have the same business processes as we do. So when ArriveCan came to be, and we were the, the government was looking at trying to uh, put this together, did you approach them, or did someone approach you? First time I knew that this, so there was going to be a... a pandemic response contract, I was reached out to by PSPC. They were the ones informed me that there was going to be a contract issued to us. It was a pre-contract uh, email saying just, you know, GC Strategies is being selected to uh, for a contract award of $2.35 million. And who signed that email? Who did that come from? That came from Angela Durgan of PSPC. Prior to that, you had been dealing with Botler AI and two founders of that company. And they, they're the ones that uh, sort of came to PSBC and came and complained about the processes of their contract, which there was no contract. Is that correct? Correct. And they issued concerns that uh, there was uh, privileged information, or I, I don't understand. Explain to me what is Butler AI's issue in regards to your engagement? Well, that's actually a good question. We, we're still unclear of what the misconduct and allegations are towards our company. Um, my understanding is it's been referred to the RCMP. We have not been contacted. So unfortunately, I cannot give comment on what those allegations are because we're just not aware what they are. So you didn't have a contract and Botler did not have a contract, but you were trying to promote Botler in accessing opportunities with the uh, government uh, uh, situations. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. We actually even at one time, well, we were starting to try and get them get their own vehicle so the government could miss the middleman out and go direct to Butler. How many people? How many people did Butler employ at that point? They were a two-person company out of a penthouse, and so they were trying to gain contracts with government through your support, through your relationships, through your experience. Is that how it worked? Yeah, we were offering free business development and sales leads to help them get contracts within the federal government. Yeah, that's our time, Mr. And Shusa. Uh, Mrs. Vignola, please, for six. Go ahead, please. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairperson. Mr. Firth, thank you very much for being here with us today. I know how difficult this might be. 
I'll start with questions that are quite straightforward that have to do with testimony that you've made in the past. In October 2022, at your first appearance before the committee, you stated that the government spoke to you to put in place a team that would work under its management and direction for a certain time as part of an equipment undertaking, which you agreed to. Thereafter, you said that you were very proud of the team that you provided to the Government of Canada, which managed and directed that team throughout the entire project. If I understood correctly, your role was solely to recruit. You didn't engage in any project management, any support. You didn't monitor the work that was being done by the people you recruited. Did I understand correctly? That's correct. We also had no hand in budget operational budget management either. Okay. Merci. Dans le fond, vous... Understood. So essentially, you were a middleman, an intermediary between the government and human resources when it came to payment. And you skimmed or you received 15 to uh, 30% of the total amount owed. Sorry, yeah, that is correct. We actually... It's in my evidence package I've given forth to you. Uh, over the whole duration of GC Strategies history with all federal contracts, we've actually approximately 21% is our gross margin for all 60, 65 contracts we've had with the federal government. Becca, um... I see. You also stated in October 2022, in response to a question, uh, where you were asked, as Mr. Souza, Souza recently asked you a moment ago, whether it was elected representatives or officials that res contacted you, and you said that it was uh, officials who reached out to you, public servants. Was that also the case when it comes to the harassment application and Arrive Can? And was it also the case for the COVID Alert app, please? Could you tell me that? So for COVID alert, that was a somebody from Canadian Digital Services reached out to me, understanding the work we've been doing previously on ArriveCan, and that was how the communication started. They were understanding what capacity we had for teams, what our teams were actually doing uh, at ArriveCan, the types of categories and skill sets they had, and that's what that was primarily for like for COVID alert. Could could you please repeat the other two? Uh, en fait, les deux autres... Well, the two others were to introduce uh, certain measures during COVID. So you were also contacted by officials regarding the Butler AI harassment application and also ArriveCan app. Is that correct? So, for, yes, for the ArriveCan app, that was PSPC. That was a government official that reached out to us. But for the Butler, Nobody actually reached out to us. That was just understanding that there was harassment charges that were heavily publicized in the public sector, sorry, public safety portfolio. And so that was when I reached out to Butler, understanding that there were several clients that could be in need of their services. I see. And concerning Butler AI, what occurred is that you were put under a contract that was previously awarded to Dalian and Corridix, if I've understood correctly. Correct. We were advised by CBSA to work with Dalian and Corridix. Okay. And that contract was set aside and awarded to an Indigenous company. At that point, did you get the sense that Dalian was using that as a cover, if you will, in a sense, when it came to statistics regarding uh, contracts awarded to Indigenous persons. You're not Indigenous, uh, from what I can understand, and Butler is not an Indigenous company or individual either, is it? I'm sorry, I'm not the expert to answer that question. I'm, I'm not familiar with the Indigenous procurement process. Um, I, I couldn't give comment on that. I'm sorry. Merci. Thank you. Now, I'd like to come back to COVID alert. 
you stated that it was a Canadian Digital Services official who reached out to you. Were there officials from Health Canada who also reached out to you, please? Um, during the COVID alert uh, inception of the contract, it was just purely Canadian Digital Services resources. D'accord. Merci beaucoup. I see. Thank you very much. I have about 30 seconds remaining. We received invoices, bank transfers uh, from Gal Dalian to GC Strategies. Now, I won't uh, specify the amounts, if that's OK, but what I did observe was a transfer for Hoodsmith CBSA. Now, I tried to locate the company. I found another family by the same name. Could you please uh, tell me what or who Hoodsmith CBSA is, please? In French, uh, it's a different word, obviously, so that wouldn't be make sense to you, perhaps. Brief answer, Mr. Firth. Um, Hoodsmith is a, is a person. It's not a company. It's an individual. Thank you very much. Mr. Backrack, please, for six minutes. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Firth, I, I think I'll start with uh, some of your previous testimony before this committee. Uh, in your previous appearance, when you were asked about the ArriveCan situation and what it reveals about the government's contracting process, you said, I don't think it reveals anything. The reality is that it would have been a perfect execution if the four deliverables had been done on time and been of the standard CBSA would have approved and paid. This was not a contracting issue. So since then, we, we have the Auditor General's scathing report. We have the Office of the Procurement Ombudsman, uh, another scathing report looking at the, the contracting and procurement process. Do you still stand by that view that this was not a contracting issue, given all the irregularities that have been very well documented? What? Can you qualify exactly the previous testimony? Because that doesn't seem like something that resonated with what I said. I don't think I blame the contracting for the arrive can. I think I explained the contracting saying there were three sole source national security exemptions. Okay, well, you, you said this was not a contracting issue. Um, but, but I'm not sure what the context, that seems like it's out of context. I, if you could kindly give me the information prior to that. I think the, the question was uh, about uh, what the ArriveCan situation reveals about the government's contracting process. That's what you were asked about. And you said okay. that you didn't think it revealed anything, that you felt like the problem was not a contracting issue, it was a performance issue. And I, I'm, yeah. I guess it what was, I'm what... The, uh, PSPC did follow all procurement right. processes in issuing those contracts for COVID pandemic response, or one of which being the ArriveCan app. Okay, so des despite all of the the uh, findings that have been brought forth by the ombudsperson and the auditor general, you still feel like this was a performance issue and not a contracting issue. But uh, I'll move on. I, I think, Mr. Firth, you, you've portrayed the services that your company provides as one of um, IT recruitment, essentially assembling teams of IT professionals for the government. And yet uh, there's evidence that actually what was happening was the opposite that the government was uh, finding IT professionals that could provide services and then directing them uh, to work with you. Is that what has happened in the past, specifically with oh, Mr. I, McDonald and, and other firms? No, I think, you're, I think you're referring to one specific component where the, the firm approached CBSA and shortly thereafter, those names appeared on one of our contracts. Mm -hmm. um, that was... You know, part of the government is, is pro they have a process, they have a problem, they have to find a solution, and they either have to go to an RFP, which sometimes takes three to six months, or they look to use an existing vehicle. I can assume that maybe the opportunity was time sensitive, and they using pre like procurement processes, three to six months would have taken too long. They have to ask them to come to myself or any other existing contract to try and get the the, the work done sooner. I, I guess the, the hard thing for, for me to understand is how the public gets value out of this, because essentially the government has identified a contractor that can do the work for it, for them, but instead of simply setting up a contract with that, uh, with that company,